Well, hello everyone, my name is Nick, and this week's plan of the week is Aglinema commutatum silver bay, commonly referred to as the Chinese evergreen. And I wanted to talk about this variety in particular this week because I feel like this is the most prevalent, most common variety of Chinese evergreen that you're going to find. You're gonna find it in practically every houseplant store, big box store, probably even grocery stores and flower shops because it is just such an easy houseplant to grow. This is truly a tried and true houseplant. And I know that some of those plants can be deemed a little too boring for being common, dare I say. And I feel like this is one that might really fall into that criteria because it is so common, you're going to find it probably growing in lobbies of buildings and shopping malls and airports because it's just such a reliable houseplant. So don't just pass it over because of that. Learn from that and learn to love it because it can grow in really a lot of conditions that you have in the home. Especially this one, uh, Chinese evergreens are known for being lower light houseplants, but I feel like that is really uh, dominated by the varieties that sport green foliage. Uh, the ones that have reds and pinks and whites, while they still handle lower light, these are the varieties that you're going to be able to grow in the darkest corners of your home, which is why you're going to find them growing in so many public places where light might be a little on the slim side. So as far as light goes, like I said, these can tolerate lower light areas of your home. Uh, I would just be sure to try to acclimate them to those conditions. Uh, I have found quite often uh, when I brought home these plants and I've heard from others as well, that if you just bring home a Chinese evergreen and just throw it in the dark corner that you have in your home that you're planning on putting it in, it might not react very well. Most common, you're gonna have a couple of the leaves from the lower parts of the plant start to turn yellow and fall off, usually at an alarming rate, like there might be like three or four at a time, which I would say with my aglianemas, it is not uncommon for them to have like one leaf yellowing at a time, as they usually only hold on to like 10 leaves maximum per plant at a time. They're not usually just this full column of leaves. They usually do start to get a little bit more caney over time, as you can see uh, right here. And I've had this one for believe it or not, like four or five years at this point. I know it looks rather young, but uh, when I first brought this one home, I lived in my cave of an apartment that I lived in in like 2017. Uh, it was very, very dark, and I brought this home and I put this in a darker corner of my home as I had heard that it was a low light plant. In fact, that's what the tag said when I bought it at the big box store. So I figured it would be fine. And while I was there, I believe like two of the plants in the pot, there were four, I believe at the time, uh, did wither away because they were just not happy with the conditions that I was giving. So uh, that is something you might have happen if you were just throwing them into a dark corner of your space. So you might wanna have this a little bit closer to the window if you have a really dark home or before you put it in one of those darker corners of your home, maybe have it grow in a lighter room of your home for like a month or two until it starts putting off some new growth. In terms of the watering too, uh, that is something where you can find some yellowing going on on both ends of the spectrum. If you are watering it too much, you're gonna find it similar to what I was just saying if you are subjecting it to too low light because those things kind of go in, uh, in tandem with each other. Uh, so if you are watering this too much, you're probably gonna have a couple leaves start to turn yellow from the base of the plant and fall off because it's just not able to process all of the water that this house plant is receiving and it's just getting rid of it by expelling some of those leaves, but it could be a death sentence. So be wary of that. These are definitely house plants that thrive on uh, being more on the drought droughtish side, I don't know the word I'm looking for, the dry side, but uh, if you do subject these to too much drought, you are also probably going to get them start to turn yellow or brown from those lower leaves uh, as because these are houseplants that are known for being uh, low light and drought tolerant, you can forget about these a little too much. In my experience, I've done it before. They become very wilty. They do take some time to recover from that wilt because usually they're already subject to some pretty dry soil. So. Keep that in mind. Don't forget about your aglianemas. You can be a little bit more lackadaisical with them as I most certainly am. But just basically the point I'm trying to drive across here is that you just need to give them a little bit more mind, particularly when you first bring them home. Don't just throw them in a dark corner and forget about them. Make sure that they are getting a good amount of light to start out before you start to push them in the darker corners of your home. In fact, I would say all the aglianemas that I've had, I either like at first grew them near a window or under a grow light. The ones that are looking fantastic. This one obviously has kind of been through hell and back over time as it's now just one plant left over. I've learned from my mistakes, let's put it that way. But uh, as I had them 
over time I can push them even further and further away from the windows and I have found no issues in that. In fact, I would say these are the most foliage-y, foliage I don't know the word I'm looking for, foliage-ish, fo leafy, leafy, the leafiest house plants that I grow in my home that can grow best in the lowest light areas of my home. So if you really want some dynamic foliage in a darker corner of your home, aglianemas are the ones that you want. Uh, and unfortunately, these are not the cheapest houseplants. They're not expensive by like today's standards of like what some houseplants cost in the triple or sometimes quadruple digits, but still a small four inch pot of aglianema is still probably gonna cost like 15 to $20 just because they are such slow growing houseplants that the wholesalers tend to sell them for more. And if you're going for more out there varieties of aglianemas, the price can go up even higher than that. There are definitely some collector varieties that are on the market at this moment, but Silver Bay and a couple other varieties are going to be very inexpensive in comparison. And if you're just getting your feet wet with aglianemas and you uh, don't want to make the mistake of buying a beautiful lush plant and starting to lose a couple too many leaves at first, I would recommend giving a Silver Bay a go because it is definitely one that you're going to learn a lot from and it's not going to break the bank. And if you are not happy with the way that these start to look over time, like I said, they start to form cane because they just don't really hold on to as many leaves as some other plants do, you can propagate these just by simple stem cuttings and you will notice along uh, where each notch is, each little ridge, there is a little bump uh, it can either be a node or sometimes it's a little bit of new growth that be could be coming out. Usually the new growth part will be a little bit more green and the node part will be a little bit more brown. And you can just go ahead and cut these between two nodes, place it in water. I would recommend doing water because these are slower growing houseplants so they do take some time to root, uh, especially if you're working with a less humid environment, like if you're just gonna throw it somewhere in your home, just throw it in a water glass, let them root up and in no time you'll have another aglianema. And if you're lucky and still take care of the stump, as well as possible, it will regrow a new plant. So you might turn one stemmy, caney plant into two lush, beautiful house plants and start to fill out your aglianema, although it does take time. These are very, very slow growing house plants. I would say on average, my aglianemas are putting out maybe like three, four or five leaves a year, depending on, you know, the first year they sleep, the second year they creep, the third year they leap. So it depends if they're sleeping, creeping or leaping. So a bunch of things to keep in mind. Uh, these are, considered to be moderately toxic. So if you do have nippy pets in your home, I would be mindful there. Uh, you can subject these to just normal household temperatures. I don't think I ever have worried about temperature with this. I'm sure these wouldn't appreciate a draft and you're probably going to have them grow best between like 60 to 80 degrees, just standard, standard household temperature. And the humidity I mentioned, uh, standard household humidity is fine. That's why these houseplants are so prevalent. They are known uh, with their thicker leaves to be able to withstand normal household humidity. And I don't even think I mentioned the soil because I have the sheet of moss that's covering up my soil, so I barely even think about it. But I just have this growing in a standard aroid mixture, just like a peat or coconut coir based mix that I have a healthy amount of perlite or pumice added to, as well as some orca bark. You can even add some charcoal if you're feeling it, but I think the perlite or pumice and the bark is most important. These have some pretty thick roots uh, as far as most plants go. So these appreciate a chunkier mixture on top of the fact that they are more drought tolerant house plants and do not like sitting in wet soil. So using a chunkier mixture or a more gritty mixture is perfect and it's going to help keep the moisture at bay, but also uh, hold on to a little bit of moisture so that these aren't drying up completely. Like there is a decent balance between overwatering and underwatering your aglianemas, but I feel like that's more of a Iraqi road when things are first starting out, when these things can be more subject to some of those yellowing leaves and just some overall issues. And for pests, I have had some thrips issues with my aglianemas in the past. Usually it's just on the new leaves as with many houseplants, uh, they're curled up and for some reason the pests just seem to be drawn towards those new curled up leaves where they can just hide and suck some juices out. But I haven't really had an issue with like spider mites or mealybug or anything like that. It's just been a couple of thrips here and there. But I really even wouldn't even consider it to be like an issue. I don't consider my aglianemas to be thrips magnets. It's more just like if there are some thrips in the general vicinity and my aglianema happens to be there, the thrips will absolutely make do with my aglianemas. But I think that's about it. I think uh, fertilizing, oh gosh, you don't really have to fertilize your aglianemas that 
wildly. I barely fertilize mine because they're just such slow growing house plants. But like this one, for example, that I've had for a couple of years now and it's like lived inside the same planter for a couple of years, had the same soil and the nutrients are starting to be depleted. I'll go ahead and give it just uh, half the dose of a standard house plant fertilizer. Uh, probably like once every two months you could do once a month during the growing season but like I said these just really aren't that uh, vigorous of growers so I just don't see the need to fertilize them that much in fact I think you'll be better off just fertilizing them a little bit less so now I'm gonna cut it off for today's video how to care for Aglaonema commutatum spring snow a really excellent houseplant don't deem it too common if you've never tried growing one before give it a grow because it can go practically anywhere and look fantastic so thank you guys so much for joining me today. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at Philly Foliage. Subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great time.